Hey everybody, it's Plasma1945 with you taking off and today what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to hit Mach 2.0 or at least Mach 1.6 in an SU-27. And remember this is a real mission, multiplayer online with real people. So let's get up in the air. So I've got with me in this flight Aaron today. He is uh, one of the regulars on GS and uh, funny story because it was Aaron who about four months ago sent me a message on GS in the open chat saying, hey, are you the same Plasma who makes all the videos? So I was mildly surprised that people were watching these videos and uh, I'm glad that you guys are enjoying them. But speaking of enjoying the videos, let's get up in the air and let's go Mach 2.0 here. One of the things that a lot of pilots in the flankers find out is it's a lot of fun to fight in the weeds. And it is. Unlike a F-15, which goes high and fast, most people have a perception that the flanker fights really well, really effectively down in the weeds, down on the ground, really close to the tree level. And that is absolutely true. The maneuverability is phenomenal and the flanker is very effective at that altitude. If you can use the EO system to lock onto targets, you're going to get them. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go high and I am going to go fast. Aaron's going to be on my wings. So we've got a few indicators here. First we've got airspeed, our altitude, and then we also have another indicator which is our climb rate. That's the arrow that's blinking. This is in meters per second. This will change as you're climbing, ascending, or descending. There's one more item here that's really important, and that is your climb slope in degrees. As you can see here, I'm doing an 18 degree climb. As you're climbing in the flanker, you gotta watch all these things put together because you can climb really aggressively and gain a lot of altitude, but you may lose your airspeed. When you're climbing, you should try to keep your airspeed at around 700 to 800 if possible as you hit around four to five thousand meters here i'm actually flying a little slower as i'm talking to aaron and that's because i didn't bring up my gear but if you were climbing properly you'll be passing four thousand meters and that's about twelve thousand feet with a speed of about 700 to 800 kilometers an hour now as you can see once you pass through about five thousand you need to bring your nose down from 18 or 20 degrees down to about 10 and why is that? That's because the air is a lot less dense as you climb. So what happens is, because the air is less dense, your engines need to work harder for you to gain that speed. If you try to ascend above, say, 30,000, you're going to have a lot of trouble actually gaining any speed as you try to ascend. So right now I'm actually in vertical scan mode, and as you can see some of the indicators are still there. That's my airspeed and also my altitude. The magic number for the SU-27 J-11 and the variance is around 7,000 meters. That's 21,000 feet. At that altitude, you can fly an afterburner non-stop and your fuel consumption will be barely higher than if you were on the deck flying above the trees at 95% thrust. So imagine that you're flying at altitude doing Mach 1.5, Mach 2 in full afterburner the whole time and when you're flying that high and fast in an SU variant plane, make sure you like, subscribe, and comment to let me know so I'll keep making more of these videos. All right, so let's keep going here. So I'm in full afterburner. I got my gear up, and I'm passing around 8,000 meters. At this point, it's all about gaining speed. Now, you can gain quite a bit of speed, but your speed isn't being correctly shown to you. There's actually a couple of factors here. The airspeed that's showing up there up in 770, airspeed, that's the molecules entering the sensor on your plane. Your actual ground speed, as you can see right now, is actually a close to Mach 1.2 in this case, which is way faster. And that's because up high, the air density is different than down low, so your speed actually starts to vary. As you can see, the dial is showing me 780, but my true airspeed is actually coming up to almost Mach 1.5. As you get to about 10,000 meters of altitude, the dial will actually switch around and it'll start showing you the actual real speed. And you'll see this in just a second as, I, as this happens. So as I get to about, there you go, 10,000, and just around 10,000, my speed goes from 880 to 1,420. Now, why did that happen? 
That's because past a certain point, the plane starts relying on your airspeed, true airspeed as you're traveling above the ground, well, ground speed. And uh, if you ever want to hit up Stinger 12 or anybody from the KIAP folks, those guys are the masters of flying high and fast. At this point, I'm hitting uh, 1500 kilometers an hour. I'm pushing up almost to Mach 1.5, flying 10 kilometers or about 30,000 feet up in the air. This is pretty slick. If you're used to the Suhoi flying down low on the deck and uh, trimming trees, once you get up this high, it's pretty addictive. I'll put up a video of me going Mach 2.5 one day. But uh, as I come up here to almost one Mach 1.5, we start to get into a situation. As you can see on tack view in the top right hand corner, uh, I've got Aaron right next to me. He's just passing above me. We're crossing because we've got hostiles detected. There are two hostiles coming in towards us, maintaining our speed and continuously speeding up. Now I'm almost at Mach 1.6. The hostiles are coming in from our 12 o'clock. I launch an ER missile and it heads off towards the target. So right now my missile's got an airspeed of about uh, Mach 3 at launch because its motor just kicks it up into speed that much faster. Similarly, Aaron on my wing also launches a missile and at this point we've been talking way too much so we break off away from our targets because they've launched on us and we weren't paying attention. That's because that's what happens when you chat. I actually have to break lock here, and as you can see, I'm making a very slight turn. I'm not dropping too much speed, but I'm maintaining about Mach 1.6. An AIM-120 comes right up against me and loses lock as I notch it, but also I'm outrunning it. The, uh, the AIM-120 that's right next to me was coming in at Mach 2. I maintain Mach 1.5, 1.6 almost all the way through the turn and the AIM-121 stupid. Similarly, Aaron has also launched and he is banking away from a hostile missile, trying to get away from that missile that's coming in. I've defeated my missile, and at this point I can either stay high or go low. We are over mountain terrain and I do feel way more comfortable hunting down low, so that's actually what I start doing here. I start swinging around and then coming back down towards the mountains. If you have to travel, let's say, a hundred miles and you find that uh, it's a long way to go by all means climb up high go fast your fuel consumption is going to be just about the same all right so i've got a target in front of me and i'm pushing that target the target's turning cold launch a couple more missiles and aaron's also launching on a hostile he's tracking his missile and as soon as he gets a splash he goes evasive. You'll see the puff of smoke there. Boom. There's a puff of smoke and Aaron's out of there. Perfect launch. Well executed. He's hitting the weeds. Meantime, I'm pursuing one bandit, pushing him north while Aaron is taking a break and uh, breaking off from his attack after scoring a kill. I'm in hot pursuit of another bandit. Now I'm down at the deck, just trimming the trees. This is, this is my most comfortable way to fly trying to pick up that bandit that's ahead of me. There's still a few missiles flying around, a couple of missiles that I've defeated. And just creeping around, you know, standard issue plasma. Sticking to the deck. So I've got an F-15 coming in hot towards me. Pick him up on data link, swing around, he's right above me, he's even marking with contrails. And there's a launch. Still keeping him and tracking him. Second missile. He was able to chaff and flare and evade the first. Second missile has a slightly more advantageous run. But even that one he outruns. Alright. That's the beauty of an F-15. It's a fast plane. You can easily outrun a missile if you launch it at him. Things are exploding around me and there's a hit and splash. All right, one F-15 down. Aaron's also got a kill. So at this point, I'm looking around, and I pick up a hostile right above me. I'm down to two R-73s, which are short-range Fox 2s. 
not a lot of opportunity to launch here why and that's uh, well this guy is up high he's diving so he's picking up more speed he's turning away from me I can see that on data link there is no point launching at this guy even though I have launch authorization he's got way too much energy and he is converting that energy the altitude into energy as well here it looked like I had a chance to get him he passes right in front of me but he hasn't dropped off any speed whatsoever and he evades my missile all I can do is just sit on at six o'clock and try to push him that's really all you can do in this situation you're hoping that the SAMs aren't gonna launch on you and that's what I'm looking at my RWR and I see that yeah the SAMs are definitely picking me up and you're hoping that Aaron or your wingman is going to come up to this guy and get a launch out on him which he does beautifully here pops up over the hills as I'm pushing this guy to the south He's right in front of me. I'm still sticking on his 6 o'clock. There's that smoke trail, if you can see it right in the middle of the screen there, from Aaron. Aaron's missile has already gone up towards him. And as I'm pushing this guy and trying to chase him away, I fire my last missile, just in case. But, if you can see it on attack view, Aaron smacks him and he has blown up and he's out of there. At this point, I'm announcing that I am RTB. I'm down to uh, 3,000 liters of fuel. I've got no missiles left, so I'm completely Winchester. And I'm getting the heck out of here. So I'm going to bring up the speed dial here so you guys can check this out. So as we're, we're in voice chat here on Discord, and I'm telling the guys I'm going to go Mach 2.5. Didn't quite get to it. So I'm already doing Mach 1.5, uh, 1.3, and I'm still accelerating. I'm at uh, 9,000 meters, so that's 26. 7,000 feet just full blast here and uh, past Mach 1.5 and going up to Mach 2 I've got enough fuel to get home um, if you're flying low or if you're flying high the average consumption is about 1,000 liters for every hundred kilometers but I'm kind of being a bit uh, well how would I put this I've been inefficient. I'm going full blast here just so I can get that fast. And there you go. I've hit Mach 2. Now watch this. As soon as you start doing any sort of flight control adjustments, you can tend to lose speed. And what I did here is I started doing a slight dive and I actually uh, choked my engines out, believe it or not. So my speed right away dropped by almost 400 kilometers. So I went from Mach 2.0 uh, to Mach 1.8 also if you start doing any sort of banking as you can see as soon as I'm in this turn I'm losing speed so you need to have continuous afterburner and make no crazy turns otherwise your speed goes down like a rock so fly straight fast and don't make any sharp turns if you want to maintain that speed now at this point I'm almost at uh, Tbilisi, I'm only 30 miles away, so about 60 kilometers. So I've got my speed way down. I'm already passing Mach, well, I'm well, well below Mach 1.0. I'm down to approximately 200 liters of fuel, which is not a heck of a lot. If you think I can land it, make sure you hit like and subscribe, right? And Aaron is also coming back in. He came back with two missiles, or maybe three missiles, and I came back with zero missiles, which is all good time. And again, ferry yourself there and back if, you, if you've if you got the distance to fly. Climb up to about 2,000 uh, to 7,000 meters. That's at least 10,000 to about 30,000, and you'll have a really good flight back with a very effective uh, fuel consumption. All right, so Aaron's coming in for his landing. There's home sweet home. This is a pretty effective flight. Aaron's got two kills. I've got uh, splash one for me, but that's not what counts. What counts is coming back alive, and I didn't appreciate that as much as I do now because DCS isn't quite Call of Duty. All righty, so let's land this thing. I've completely shut down my engines. I am, well, not completely. I've basically brought them down to idle. So at this point, I am making a bank towards the airport just so I can bleed off some speed. 
because I'm both l coming down and turning. And this is a pretty tight turn here. I've got still 800 kilometers of sp an hour of speed. I've got just enough fuel for one more pass in case I need to do this, but I better land this on my first go because I don't want to have to scramble here. Popping up air brake, cutting my speed down from about 800 kilometers an hour down to almost 400. Also flaps are down and gear has come down. So in the last 15 seconds, I cut half of my speed off. And there we go. Nice landing, a little fast. And here comes air and from the opposite direction. We took off at the same time and now we are landing right at the same time. How awesome is that? We both survived, we both came back and I am throwing up some flares for him to see. As he drives by. Here's some more flares and mission accomplished. So there you go, don't be afraid to fly high. Just remember, climb up gently maintain your speed of at least 800 kilometers an hour as you climb and fly above 7000 to be fuel efficient